I will have another amazing game of leader chess to show you against and Shax. So that's Andorra and Shax as in chess. So this is in the Chesscom Blitz Cup 2018. So it started with e4 from Anne Shax and Lila chooses the Sicilian defense. Knight f3, d6, we go into the Neidorf variation. And now bishop g5, e6, f4, queen b6. Will this be a poison pawn variation? So hitting that b2 pawn and it's shielded, which is a repeat of another game in the championship, at least one other game so far. Knight bd7. Uh, so queen e2, queen c7, and now white plays a4. This is a very interesting mixture of restraints and still the idea of casting queenside potentially. Bishop e7, g3, so not g4, but g3. That looks in some ways more solid, but in another way, this bishop does seem to be a bit of a problem piece sometimes. It's hemmed in by its own pawn chain here. Uh, so we have black casting. Bishop g2, h6, the bishop goes to h4. We have rook e8, and white castles queenside. So it's a strange mixture of restraint against b5, castling queenside, and restraint against the d5 square. You can see all of white's pieces lock locking down d5 here. So an interesting strategic battle. Black's two main pawn breaks potentially d5 or b5. But at the moment, this bishop's also bearing down the whole diagonal. And in fact, Leela shuts down this bishop here because it was eyeing potentially uh, after e5, uh, the c8 rook. So for example, in this position, if Leela had played b5, then e5, and then taking the rook is very strong, as you'd imagine. So e5 first, which compromises the d5 square a little bit. But at the moment, Leela feels... She has adequate support, it seems. Queen d3 uh, was played. Now, if rook hf1, as an example, b5 might actually be uh, okay for white here because, say, knight takes, there's the idea of the exchange sack in this line, and this actually can be very dangerous for black. So, uh, yeah, rook hf1 is, is interesting as well, setting up some possibilities which are uh, are interesting but uh, we have queen d3 and in fact now b5 is played in this position so they're liberating in any case ignoring that a4 clamp and white plays king b1 a bit of a sad testimony that things are not working as expected let's have a look here if a takes a takes this obviously activates the rook is this absolutely enough if we look at knight takes for example here b5 queen b6 this position is exceptionally dangerous uh, for white if we look at this now for example here it's even possible to do this now threatening knight takes b3 forking queen and king and this is just massive for black massive advantage there let's have a look at this again with a takes and knight takes uh, we had a look at knight takes. Uh, now, in this line, we had a look at knight c3 there. Also, let's have a look at knight takes d6. So if knight takes d6, actually knight c5 is very strong. Uh, so here, for example, if knight takes, then bishop takes. And this is a disaster of the check, then taking on d6. So here uh, on knight c5 have a look at this again for a moment if knight b3 here then bishop b4 is very dangerous cutting the king's escape and we just need to take out that knight for this to be even more effective and white's just in huge trouble here as you might expect huge huge trouble so all these variations are pretty nasty after a takes a takes we're looking at knight takes. You might wonder, what about just queen takes for the record? Again, bishop a6. This is also very dangerous, this position. And you'll note here, g5 actually traps that bishop, which is a liability because of its own pawns. And after some bureauc bureaucracy, some form filling, 
uh, that bishop can eventually be taken. So knight takes e4, protects against the queen coming in. And we protect that knight, move the rook, uh, make sure we're not losing a piece in return. That bishop's still trapped. A few more fil forms to fill in. And uh, eventually it, it transpires that the, the bishop is actually trapped. Yeah, and if it can be taken safely, yes, it can. So there's all these implications of taking, and they all seem very bad for white, as white, as one might intuitively suspect. So, yes, this meek king move. B takes, opening up the lines. Yep, leader is the first one to seem seemingly have dangerous lines of attack here, and in opposite side castling scenarios, it's often the first one to get the attack which wins the game so Queen c3 artificial looking play so it's not really about attack now it's just it seems to be about soaking up black's pressure if possible so what will happen from here Queen b8 Knight c1 Knight b6 getting rid of the a pawn blockader we have Queen c6 actually swapping the blockader now so Knight takes a4 and then bishop d7 but that pawn is now pushed and there's a big idea of d5 here look at this d5 look at this bishop hitting a3 white distracts a bit it seems or tries to this bishop away from that d5 but Lila just plays g takes doesn't mind the pawns being doubled so there's still this big idea of d5 here hitting the queen uh in fact in this position uh Lila could have it's a it's a real luxury position after bishop takes uh, because actually bishop takes f6 uh, was possible here if we look at bishop takes f6 as well because uh, this opens up the bishop against b2 so it doesn't matter about the d6 pawn here just taking here is is a nightmare on b2 for example here again it doesn't matter about the bishop because of b2 say b3 if rook takes d7 we get a nice seesaw check scenario great fun seesaw checks a huge fun so check 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 <laughs> and then carnage just carries on and on so um all of these lines yeah on on bishop takes this is absolutely plausible as well uh if rook takes let's have a look at rook takes then bishop e6 is simple and strong. So look at the bishops just coordinating very well against the white king here and the b file. It's just beautiful coordination. So say rook d1, that just wins the exchange at least. That's winning. So yeah, it's it's a very, very strong position. And there was a luxury of just either taking with the pawn or the bishop. But the pawn was used. Queen d3. And uh, here, now we have rook c8 uh, on c3 now was played. If uh, you might wonder, isn't that a weakening move? And we've seen this kind of thing before. Why is white weakening on the light squares in this example? Well, let's have a look. If rook he1, it seems black has a very strong idea potentially for rook a7 just to intensify the b file pressure with rook b7. So, for example, this is highly unpleasant when black starts celebrating the b file and the queen is pushed into oblivion here onto the a1 square. Yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's <laughs> if, if the queen took, uh, let's have a look at the queen taking then rook takes b2 check check and mate thanks very much so if the queen's really pushed onto a1 this can't be good news after say d4 this is a nice fun line to have a look at so where black just builds up tons of pressure on the b file and it just crashes through or the queen can infiltrate pinning all the pieces and total disaster carnage results checkmate for example so uh, c3, yeah, trying to blunt black's attacking pressure. Bishop e6, going in on the light squares, or focusing on the light squares. This position is so strong that even d5, believe it or not, as a 
as, as a sort of random move test <laughs> even this is winning well I just checked out d5 for a laugh because it's kind of it looks liberating and actually you know a free threatening chat mate this scenario giving up another pawn is a lot of fun here off the check and giving up another pawn because now this this diagonal is just lethal bishop f6 this bishop without a counterpart is really dangerous in all these lines yeah it doesn't matter if black if if white has an extra pawn on d5 it's not helping the king here black's got a huge advantage here even after the fun d5 so that shows how strong black's position is uh so let's have a look so in the game anyway we have bishop e6 queen d2 queen c7 rook h e1 a3 yeah the pressure's just mounting here things are cracking c3 seems to be uh on on the cards but leader actually just puts more pressure on b3 look at this gigantic pressure building up here on the white position so we have king a2 on king c2 you might think uh just a2 is very nice for example here bishop takes b3 check so king a2 we have queen takes c3 and now b3 is next to go potentially but for one moment actually a bit of a reprieve for the b3 pawn while this rerouting occurs of this bishop now taking on b3 and the bishop's ready to centralize basically this maneuver is magnificent if you look at it potentially heads to a nice central square which would blunt the d-file so lovely centralization bishop c3 supporting rook b2 check there's no chance for rook takes d6 here if rook takes d6 there's a loose piece here on g2 so for example check and just taking that loose piece so we have rook d3 but now check this end game is magnificent a takes threatening to queen that's stopped magnificent centralization wonderful positional play now even though it's opposite color bishops you might think this is a danger sign for a draw but black's got this gigantic pass pawn on b2 here and in fact look at what Leela does now she ramps up the pressure with this king coming to the center and guess what is played here this was important here because if say bishop c4 before i answer that question about what's important bishop c4 there's a check and then the pawn triumphs after taking queens so king c2 but guess what leader plays here now if i give you five seconds to pause the video what would you play here to increase the pressure okay d5 yeah it, the king's going for a walk here not inhibited by the d6 pawn it's going on a fast track bishop d3 if e takes d5 uh, the king just walks in yeah rook a3 threatening rook c3 check is super tricky because rook a1 now threatening to take an mb1 so he say here and now it gets it's just too much after e4 this other pass pawn threatening rook c3 again this other pass pawn is simply making this absolutely winning yeah white's crumbling here there's no way to handle all the pressure of both pass pawns so uh after d5 bishop d3 king d6 but uh, similar scenarios are emerging anyway now so rook a3 we have check the rook is poised to put more pressure now ramping up the pressure tying white down bishop e3 the bishop's going to install itself on c1 to threaten things like b1 now so the rook gets in the way while it can now the bishop goes to c1 yes this is absolutely lost for white it seems bishop g2 the king comes the d4 now and now this pawn is pushed this is just desperate this this g5 so now this is another desperate move in a totally lost position and it doesn't bother yeah it just just the whole rook up now i mean potentially well a bishop up pardon me a whole bishop up so rook takes h3 yeah it's just a mopping up job very very easy to convert this so this is the finish to the death here actually it seemed to have been uh there seems to be zero one <laughs> as though that there is a resignation here 
Okay, that's intriguing. But yeah. Okay, so that was a, a fun game. Another amazing Sicilian defense game. I think I think anyone watching these Sicilian defense videos, uh, they're probably going to be inspired for these opposite side casting games. They do seem to be a lot of fun for black in these examples. What is Leela doing, which is so magical? Yeah, I think these games are worthy of study for opposite side castling examples. Great play. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.